Welcome to this video tutorial where I'm going to show you how to generate perfect character sheets and turn your AI generated character into a 3D model that's ready for gaming and animation. Creating a detailed and accurate character sheet is a crucial step in the game development process. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to generate a reference sheet and use Blender Open Pose, Control Net, Stable Diffusion, and finally Character Creator and MetaHuman to turn your concepts into a reality. So without further delay, let's jump straight into it. And first of all, we're going to use OpenPose 7, which is a free add-on for Blender, to make a template for character turnaround concepts. Then we're going to drag the renders that we made inside this add-on to ControlNet to use it as a reference image for our ControlNet model. And what we're going to need is first of all, let's lock the view to our camera. And I'm going to take a frontal image, a profile image, a side image, Make sure to get the other profile image. Then I'm going to compile the results that I got and put them into Photoshop so I can produce a character turnaround template. And using Photoshop, this is what I ended up with. This is how a character turnaround uh, open pose template should look like. And this is what we're going to use inside of ControlNet. And now in my Stable Diffusion Editor, I'm going to set up my ControlNet model. Press Enable. I'm not going to choose a preprocessor. However, I'm going to choose the open pose model because I already have the reference image that I'm looking for. I've already generated it within the add-on that I was previously using. And this is the one that I've generated. I can leave a link to it below, and I will also leave a link to one that, that is ready, an image or link if you don't want to do it on your own. Now here are some results that I think are good enough for me to move on forward with using uh, photogrammetry. And the prompts that I used are basically mid-journey free for style. Uh, this is what you need to write when you're uh, using the mid-journey checkpoint before uh, using uh, your prompts. Then I write exactly what I want to see uh, in my images, such as a detailed character sheet of a male fantasy character with short hair. Then I write the medium which I want to see uh, that prompt in, such as a character turnaround sheet, uh, profile, digital image, that's really important. And I write like a name of a website. To get inspiration from. I know that Pinterest has a lot of good character turnaround sheets. This is why I used it over ArtStation. Then I want it to be highly detailed and I emphasize that using two brackets. I want it to be in a fantasy settings. Of course I want it to have good proportions. I want it to have good anatomy, good face, and the resolution I want it to be in 4k and high resolution. As for the negative prompts, it's also a very iterative process. You do not want it to have bad proportions. You do not want it to have a bad face bad eyes, you do not want it to be ugly, poorly drawn, etc. Deformed, mutilated, bad anatomy, out of frame, out of focus, uh, noisy, blurry, etc, etc. Keep iterating upon those until you get the result that you want. Now, I'm going to take one of these images that I have, take them into Blender, and use the Blender Face Builder add-on. See you in Blender. Now back in Blender, the process is really simple. All I have to do is load up my Face Builder add-on, add the images that I made using Stable Diffusion. Of course, you can crop them using Burmi. It's a very simple process. And I'm using these pins as you know destinations to where I want this mesh to be. I drop single pins. And you can notice that it automatically somewhat mirrors to the other side. So what I did first was the nose, the eyes, then the middle of the mouth, and everything was automatically mirrored. And it's useful for you to start using it on single sides instead of both sides at the same time, as it could become asymmetrical and chaotic. It's There isn't really a learning curve to this. I mean, any beginner who has like the smallest grasp on the Blender AI can come in and do this. Uh, it's very accessible. The only downside of this is that you have a very limited time trial for this, so you need to be really wise on how you use it. Now let's do the same thing, but from the side. Repeat the same process, but for the sake of time I'm going to use a line face. The cheeks could use some modifying. The ears definitely would. And bear in mind that you could use this also to do even more stylized characters. I mean, you don't need to do realistic characters 
the same way that I'm doing right now from digital paintings. So yeah, you can use this workflow and get creative with it. Once you're satisfied with your mesh, the next step for you is to now bake the textures that you have onto your generated mesh. And it's really simple and you must use butterfly. I find the best results when I use butterfly. And what this is basically going to do is that it's going to take the textures from all three of the sides that you imported and bake them into this. Now, our next step is going to be turning this into a game and animation ready character using MetaHuman and Character Creator. Afterwards, we're going to compare the results. Bear in mind that the face builder mesh that we just created is not necessary for Character Creator, but using it will give you more accurate results as you'll see. And now I have imported my mesh that I made in face builder into Unreal Engine 5 and I'm going to create a MetaHuman identity. This is considering that you downloaded and installed uh, the MetaHuman plugin, then restarted your Unreal Engine. Okay, in my new MetaHuman identity, I'm going to double click and log in really quickly. Now that I'm logged in, I'm going to press on components from mesh and use the mesh that I made in Blender. Here it is. Let me pick a proper frame. I'm going to center my character so I could use it. Click on Promote Frame and track Active Frame. Okay. There is some correcting that I need to do. It's also really easy to achieve because I have my textures as well. I'm going to align the eyes, the mouth, the nose, sorry not the nose, the laugh lines. This is fine. You can press on MetaHuman Identity Dissolve. And I say this is an acceptable result. We can add some further additions in the MetaHuman Editor later on, but for now, I'm satisfied with what I got. Now the next step is for me to go from mesh to metahuman. Now I'm in metahuman and I'm going to select my new metahuman identity. I want him to be idle. The hair is hidden. And I want it to be only clay. I'm going to set up a quick skin material. And I had to speed this up because I usually take a really long time creating my characters and making sure they match my source material. But one thing worthy of note here that is that MetaHuman is very good at maintaining character structures. However, the style of the character is lost because MetaHuman only excels in creating realistic characters. Unlike Character Creator 4 that we're going to take a look at next, this won't maintain the initial style that we made in Stable Diffusion. So keep that in mind. MetaHuman is fantastic for making AAA-like video game characters and movie-like characters, uh, but it's not for stylization of game ready characters this is what i mean and i'm quite satisfied with the results that i'm getting here and here i am in character creator 4 and i'm going to use the headshot plugin i'm going to use my render as the headshot image and this is pretty self-explanatory pick the male character if you have a male character then choose that he has a, a beard and skull and it will generate it for you and that's it. You can see here that I choose the render that I got from Face Builder and the reason that I did that instead of getting my concept from Stable Diffusion which is also possible is that I have more control over the lighting and the overall shape of the character afterwards. Uh, you'll understand what I mean if you try for yourself and look here right off the bat this is a very similar result to what I was anticipating when I made the character concept sheet and I must say that Character Creator 4, and I keep repeating this, I know, but I must say that Character Creator 4 maintains the integrity of your character's shape and it maintains the integrity of your stylization. This is very similar to the initial concept, and this is how I imagined the character that I made in Stable Diffusion, but in 3D. This would be a very good actor for my future animations. 
And another thing that I really like about Character Creator is how compatible it is with other software such as DAS. You can bring your own grooms, clothes, and assets too. My character almost looks identical to the reference that I made in Stable Diffusion with minimal grooming and sculpting. And from here, I can take any of the characters that I generated using MetaHuman or Character Creator back into Blender or Unreal Engine to continue my project. And there you have it. This is how you can turn an AI character into a 3D model. If you found this video helpful, please leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more Blender tutorials. See you in the next one, guys.